Let me ask you this. What are the invisible chains that are holding you back from living the abundant life that God intends for you? Have you ever considered the power available to you in God's word to not just cope with these chains, but to break them entirely? My dear friends, Jesus declared in John 8, verse 36, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. This assurance means we don't have to remain in the grip of the past or the weight of condemnation. We don't have to remain shackled in chains. With faith and trust in His promise, the chains that once bound us can be completely broken, setting our spirits free to soar. Trusting in Jesus, we can break free from what holds us back and live a free and happy life. Today, I want to explore some of the ways that we can experience this true freedom by breaking every bond and chain in our lives, both visible and invisible. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. Let us journey together through God's Word that offers revelation, guidance, and profound insight into how God intends for us to live, unshackled and free. I will unfold seven powerful truths that are deeply rooted in Scripture, which serve as divine tools for breaking every bond and chain that hampers our spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being. Number one, the need to confess and take responsibility. James 5 verse 16 tells us, Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Friends, confession and accountability are the keys to spiritual freedom. Chains of guilt, shame, or secret sins can only thrive in the darkness of our solitude. It's like the story of Hakan in the book of Joshua, who took forbidden spoils from Jericho and brought defeat upon Israel. When he confessed, he broke the chain of secrecy, although he had to face the earthly consequences. Confession is not just about saying, I did it, but it's about bringing what's in the dark into the light. Did you know that the very act of confession disarms the power that these secret sins have over us? This is why the devil wants us to keep these secrets. Because once you confess, the power shifts from the sin to the Savior and chains begin to snap. Chains are broken. Also, accountability or taking responsibility helps to sustain this newfound freedom. And remember this, just breaking free is not enough. Remaining free is the goal. In this case, sometimes a trustworthy accountability partner can act as a spiritual warden, helping us not to fall back into the same pitfalls. My friends, know that you're not alone in your faith journey. Being part of our Daily Jesus YouTube community means helping each other stay on the right path. By sharing and supporting each other, like the first Christians did, we can overcome the challenges of going it alone. Number two, unlocking the freedom through the Holy Spirit. According to 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. One of the most potent ways to break every chain is by inviting the Holy Spirit into our lives. Take the case of the man at the pool of Bethesda, as seen in John 5 verses 1 to 9. For 38 long years, he was bound by his infirmity. But when Jesus, the manifestation of the Spirit, stepped in, the chains were shattered. Inviting the Holy Spirit into our lives is an invitation to freedom. The Spirit doesn't just break chains. He melts them making it impossible for them to hold us again. However, it's crucial to remember that this is not a one-time event. 
Living in the Spirit requires daily surrender, continual prayer, and a lifestyle that welcomes His presence. Furthermore, the Holy Spirit gives us discernment. Often, we're not even aware of the chains that bind us, be they habits, toxic relationships, or crippling beliefs. The Holy Spirit enlightens our understanding, enabling us to see these chains for what they truly are. When you are filled with the Spirit, you are like a hot air balloon that can't stay grounded. The chains can't hold you down because you are filled with something lighter, stronger, and more powerful. The Holy Spirit is your ticket to an elevated life, a life above and beyond any bondage. Number three, embrace the power of God's word. My friends, Hebrews 4 verse 12 reminds us, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The written word of God has an incredible power to break chains when we engage with it sincerely. Recall the life of Apollos, an eloquent man who was knowledgeable in scriptures as described in Acts 18 verses 24 to 28. His in-depth understanding of scriptures made him instrumental in strengthening the early churches. The Word is a mirror that shows us our true selves complete with our chains, but it doesn't leave us there. It provides the way to freedom. Engaging with the Word means more than just reading. It involves studying, meditating, and applying it in everyday life. When faced with temptations or trials that threaten to chain us, the Word equips us to emerge victorious. My dear friends, to utilize the chain-breaking power of the Word. It is essential to hide it in our hearts. This means memorizing scriptures that speak specifically to the chains you are dealing with. So, the next time you are faced with a situation where these chains threaten to bind you, you are well armed to defeat them. And this doesn't have to be difficult. Understand that relying on God's Word in trying times can be our stronghold. For example, if you're faced with health challenges, turn to the scriptures and declare God's promises for healing. You can make affirmations like this. You can make affirmations like, by your stripes, I am healed, referring to Isaiah 53 verse 5. Or you may say, the Lord will restore health to me and heal me of my wounds, echoing the words of Jeremiah 30 verse 17. Also, you may say, O oh, Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you have healed me. And this is inspired by Psalm 30, verse 2. In declaring these, you're standing on the firm foundation of God's promises for your well-being. Remember, the Word of God is not just ink on paper. It's a living, breathing force filled with God's power. When you allow it to dwell in you, richly, it changes you from the inside out. Chains of sickness, addictions, fear, and guilt lose their grip when confronted with the truth of God's Word. Therefore, my friends, make it a habit to soak yourself in the Word of God daily. Declare God's Word over your life. Number four, unlock the truth of forgiveness. According to Mark 11, verse 25, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Friends, forgiveness is an essential element for breaking chains, especially the chains of bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness. Let's remember the parable of the unforgiving servant in Matthew 18, verses 21 to 35. His unforgiveness didn't just bind his debtor. It bound him, leading to his torment. Forgiveness, as challenging as it may be, 
is the key that unlocks these chains. It's not about the other person deserving it. It's about you needing it. When you hold on to unforgiveness, you are, in essence, chaining yourself to the very person or situation you despise. And releasing them through forgiveness, you are actually releasing yourself. Imagine carrying a heavy backpack up a mountain. That's what unforgiveness is like. The higher you go, the heavier it gets, until it becomes unbearable. Forgiveness is like unloading this backpack. It enables you to climb your spiritual mountain with greater ease and speed. Let's not forget that forgiveness is also a divine attribute. Christ, at the height of his suffering on the cross, chose to forgive those who crucified him. By doing so, he broke the chains of sin and death, not just for himself, but for all humanity. My friends, let's be imitators of Christ in this regard. Your act of forgiveness could very well be the chain breaker for someone else too. Moreover, your act of forgiveness might be the key to breaking free from the chain of sickness and disease. Number five. The Cleansing Power of Repentance Acts 3, verse 19 instructs us, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance goes hand in hand with confession and is instrumental in breaking the chains of habitual sin. Take the example of King Manasseh in 2 Chronicles 33, verses 10 to 13. Manasseh was an evil king who led Israel astray, but when he repented sincerely, God restored him. True repentance is a change of mind that leads to a change of action. It's more than just saying, I'm sorry. Instead, it's saying, I'm sorry, and I won't do it again. It's turning 180 degrees from the direction that is causing you to sin and walking toward God. When you repent, you are not just expressing regret. You are declaring war against the very thing that binds you. It's an assertive move, like a prisoner, not just slipping out of his chains, but smashing them, ensuring they can never be used to bind him or anyone else. Repentance is not just for the sinner. It's for the saint as well. No one is beyond the need for repentance. The spiritual life is like a river, constantly flowing, and repentance is like the guiding current that redirects us when we drift astray. As you repent, remember to receive God's forgiveness. Some of us struggle with the reality of God's grace and forgiveness. Repentance clears the deck, but it's God's grace that fills it. You are not just an empty vessel. You are a vessel filled with the goodness and grace of God. Repentance does not leave you empty. It prepares you for a new infilling of the Holy Spirit. Repentance breaks the chains, but it's God's grace that ensures they stay broken. Number six, use the armor of faith in spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, verse 16, advises us, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Spiritual warfare is real, my friends. And sometimes the chains that bind us are not just physical, psychological, or emotional, but they are also spiritual. Remember the story of the demon-possessed man of the Gadarenes, as told in Mark 5, verses 1 to 20. His chains were not just physical. They were also spiritual and it took the spiritual authority of Jesus to set him free. Sometimes we find that despite our best efforts, prayer, confession, and even repentance, some chains seem unbreakable. That's when we must recognize the spiritual nature of these chains. In such instances, faith becomes our shield and the word our sword, as described in Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 18. The shield of faith is not just defensive, it's also offensive. Faith declares not just that you can be free, but that you are free. This declaration changes the spiritual atmosphere around you, 
creating an environment that is hostile to the enemy. The enemy can't chain what he can't touch, and he can't touch what's shielded by faith. Let me repeat that. The enemy can't chain what he can't touch, and he can't touch what's shielded by faith. So whenever you engage in spiritual warfare, know that the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. When you wield your shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, you're not fighting alone. You're fighting with the hosts of heaven, backing you up. Chains don't stand a chance in this setting. So lift up your shield of faith and wield your sword. Your freedom is a spiritual conquest. And number seven, understand the breakthrough in praise. In Acts 16, verses 25 to 26, the Bible tells us that at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. This shows that praise and worship are powerful spiritual weapons that break chains. This is echoed in the life of King Jehoshaphat. When faced with a multitude of enemies, he sent out a choir ahead of his army. Their praise broke the chains of impending defeat, leading to victory. This story can be found in 2 Chronicles 20 verses 21 to 22. Jehoshaphat recognized the power of praise to God and used it effectively. My friends, praise and worship are not just ceremonial. They can also be spiritual acts of warfare. They break the chains of depression, defeat, and despair. When you begin to praise, the atmosphere changes. Chains fall off and the glory of God fills the space. Also, consider that praise and worship are not just for the good times. They are especially potent in the times of trouble. When we praise God in the storm, we are defying the chains that seek to hold us down. Our praise makes room for God to move in miraculous ways. Praise is not based on your circumstance but your stance in Christ. It's an acknowledgement that regardless of what you're going through, God is still on the throne. And when God rises, chains are bound to break and his children are bound to be set free. Thank you for allowing me to share these revelations and insights from God's word with you today. May your chains be forever broken and may you walk in the glorious freedom of Christ Jesus. My friends, I want you to remember this. Every chain, no matter how strong, has a breaking point. Throughout Scripture and our personal lives, we see evidence that no bondage is too great for the power of God's love. Just as the walls of Jericho fell with a shout and the chains of Paul and Silas broke in the prison, so too can the chains that hold you back shatter through faith and prayer. As you move forward, carry the conviction in your heart that no matter the burdens or chains you bear, they are not your destiny. Remember, with God on your side, freedom is not just a possibility. It's a promise. Walk in that truth. Live in that freedom. And remember that with every sunrise, there is an opportunity for chains to be broken. May you feel the weight lifting off, and may you walk in the glorious freedom and blessings that God has destined for you. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and merciful God. Heavenly Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. I give you thanks. 
I praise you, Lord, and I give you all the glory. Your glory fills the heavens and the earth, and I am overwhelmed by your love and majesty. Father, I come before you humbly with thanksgiving and praise. I thank you for the gift of life, and I thank you for your grace, love, and mercies towards me and my loved ones. I ask for your forgiveness for the times I've faltered, for the moments of weakness where I've sinned against you. Cleanse me, Lord, and create in me a clean heart. I also forgive those who have trespassed against me. In the name of Jesus, I declare victory over the chains that bind me. I rebuke every chain of worry and anxiety, chains of fear, chains of doubt, chains of sickness and disease, chains of addiction, and all the chains that seeks to attack my life. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spirit of confusion and every thought pattern that is not aligned with your word. I bind every evil force that seeks to derail me from your divine plan and destiny for my life. Lord, deliver me from all evil and set me free from the snares and the traps of sin. Fill me with a spirit of repentance as I walk toward your light. Grant me the grace to receive your forgiveness and the fullness of your Holy Spirit. May you grant me an increase in faith. Lord, may my faith be as a shield, protecting me from the fiery darts of the enemy. I declare victory over every form of warfare that is affecting my life. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I declare healing over every area, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. May your abundant blessings flow into every aspect of my life, my relationships, my work, my finances, and my health. I pray for your divine healing to touch every cell, every organ, every joint, every muscle, and every system in my body. I pray against bonds of sickness, depression, addictions, and despair. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I lift up my loved ones to you. I pray that they come to experience the fullness of your grace and love. May they be set free from chains that bind them. May they experience healing in every aspect. And may their lives be testimonies of your never-ending grace and favor. I claim your protection and divine favor over our lives, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every person that has heard your words and have not hardened their heart. Merciful Father, as you guide us in truth, we seek deliverance from every chain that binds us. Lord, teach us to be warriors in prayer mighty in faith, and steadfast in our pursuit of your kingdom. Lord, shield us with your protection. Cover us with your grace, and fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. May we walk in complete freedom, victorious in your name, claiming healing, abundance, and divine favor over our lives. We claim the freedom promised to us through your word. And we declare that every chain binding our lives is shattered, and we are no longer prisoners to the snares of the enemy. Lord, to you be all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this message, Type the word Amen in the comments section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. 
You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.